Before we go any further, let's close our eyes and let's ask our gracious Father to guide us. Gracious Father in heaven, we do come to you tonight because we have a great need of hearing your words, the words of life. We know that there is going to be a hunger in the land and not a hunger after bread and water, but a hunger after your word. So we are coming to you before that hunger time and we are asking that you will feed us, that you will give us the bread of life. Your words are the bread of life, gracious Father. As we come before you, we do ask that the burdens of this world, the cares that we carry, that we would like you to take them from us and that you will give us your yoke upon our shoulders. For we know that your yoke is light. Dear Jesus, we want to thank you again for making it possible that not only can we call God our Father, but that you are working in our hearts to make us more like you. Please, dear Jesus, help us to recognize the importance of separating ourselves from sin. We ask this. Not because we're worthy, dear Jesus, but we ask this in your name. Amen. Well, dear friends, the first chapter that I'd like you to turn to is the chapter, or um, the book, first of all, Numbers, and I want you to go to Numbers chapter 16. Now, if you go to the Greek and you look at the word for the Greek there and you try to understand it, it it basically means to separate from, to break away from, to, how can I say, divorce yourself from whatever you were doing before. And it's very important for us to bear this in mind. In Matthew chapter 6, we are clearly told that we cannot serve two masters. We have to choose one. And although there's a war struggle going in us where we have the flesh and the spirit competing, it is crucial that in our mindset that we choose um, to divorce ourselves from sin, from flesh, that we are no longer creatures of the flesh but creatures of the spirit. We are new creatures in Christ. We need to separate ourselves from the world. Now I want to show you why this is so important and I'd like you to go to Numbers chapter 16 and we have this very interesting story about Korah where he stands up and he speaks against Aaron and, and Moses and he basically um, contends the fact that you know Moses and Aaron aren't the only important people but they are also import, important and Pride plays a very dominant role here. But what I want you to take note of is the words of God to, to Aaron and Moses and the people. And I want you to see this with me. And we're going to be reading from verse 23 on. It says there, Then the Lord said to Moses, Say to the assembly, Move away from the tents of Korah, Datham, and Abram. Moses got up and went to Dathan and Abram, and the elders of Israel followed him. He warned the assembly. And I want you to listen to this, dear friends. So basically part of the message tonight is this, this message of uh, warning. It says there, move back from the tents of those wicked men. Listen to what Moses is counseled to do. 
God says to him, tell the people to move away from. Do not touch anything belonging to them. Do you see this, this separation? It makes me think of that story where the, the Jewish people or the Israelites are marching around Jericho and the walls fall down and they are not to take anything inside the city and hold, you know, keep it to themselves. Whatever they get, they are to basically consecrate to the temple or give to the, you know, to the temple. But the interesting thing here is that there is a person who holds on to it. And that holding on to is the problem here. We are to separate ourselves from, as it says there, move back from the tents of those wicked men. Do not touch anything belonging to them or you will be swept away away because of all their sins. Now, over and over in God's word, there is the strong counsel given that we are not to mix with the nations of this world. In actual fact, I would like to take you to another chapter now, and then we're going to get to why this is so important. And I would like you to go with me to John. It says there in verse 7, Many deceivers who do not acknowledge Jesus Christ are coming in the flesh, as, sorry, Jesus Christ as coming in the flesh, have gone out into the world. Any such person is the deceiver and the antichrist. Watch out that you do not lose what you have worked for, but that you may be rewarded fully. Then it says, anyone who runs ahead and, and, and does not continue in the teaching of Christ does not have God. Whoever continues in the teaching has both the Father and the Son. If anyone comes to you and does not bring this teaching, do not take him into your house or welcome him. Anyone who welcomes him shares in his wicked work. So I want you to see that the, the thought that I'm really trying to bring out here is this concept, dear friends, that we are to take up this call of our Heavenly Father to, to move away from, to separate ourselves from the, the evil ones of the world, to separate ourselves from the, the works of the flesh. In Revelation chapter 18, we are counseled very clearly that the message of the Lord is, Come out of her, my people, and so that you will not share in her sins so that you will not receive any of her plagues. So the, again, this call is to come away from, to separate yourself from sin. Now, over and over and over, there is this counsel given. Now, two things popped up. There in Korah, for example, when we looked at what was happening there in Deuteronomy, uh, sorry, in Numbers chapter 16, we noticed that we were to separate ourselves from them because of their, their sinfulness, that their sins have a, will have a way in which they will contaminate us. I want you to just take you back and just read those words again. It says there, Move back from the tents of these wicked men. Do not touch anything. Don't touch anything belonging to them. Or you will be, and listen to this, swept away be, uh, because of all their sins. So this thought that you know, some people feel that they can handle sin, they, you know, they're not afraid of it. My counsel to you and the counsel from God's word is move away. Don't tamper with sin. If you play with fire, you're going to burn your hands. I would like you to take you to another verse, and this is found in Galatians this time. You'll notice tonight that I want you to jump around. I want you to keep working with me. So Galatians chapter 6, and I want you to look in verse 1 there, at verse 1. Galatians chapter 6 verse 1, it says, Brothers, if, any, sorry, if someone is caught in a sin, 
You who are spirit, spiritual should restore him gently, but watch yourself, or you also may be tempted. So you see here, the very important thing again is that even in the dealing of people who have you know, been trapped in sin, only those who are established in the word, those who have a strong faith in God's word, are counseled to work with that pe person gently. We cannot afford to go in unless you are prepared for that. You know that old saying, fools rush in where angels fear to tread. So this, this concept of divorce, this comfort concept of separation is crucial, dear friends. There is only one person that we need to be married to, and that is Jesus Christ. Now, sadly, because of Adam's sin, we have all been married to sin. We've all been linked to it. But here I call and I appeal to you as God's word says, move away from it. Separate yourselves from it. Divorce yourself. Move away from those thoughts or the, the influences of, of the evil one. Come out of Babylon. Don't remain in Babylon. Don't have your one foot in Babylon and your other foot in heaven. You have to separate yourself. It's a work that you have to do. It's a physical work that, that you have to do. You have to repent, turn away from, change your thinking regarding sin. Sin is not your friend. You need to move away. Now, dear friends, the reason why I'm, I felt it important to speak about this is because if you go to Revelation chapter 19 you will notice there that a very special invitation has been given to the people of this world and we read about this invitation also in Matthew chapter 22 from verse 1 on where the father who happens to be our heavenly father has invited people to a wedding banquet. Now, in order to be part of that wedding banquet, we have to separate ourselves from sin. We have to do that. Otherwise, we cannot be married to Christ. We are the bride. He is the bridegroom. So I want you to be aware of this, that we have to separate ourselves from it. There has to be this choice that you make, no longer to be part of this world, but to be in Christ. So I want you to notice in Revelation chapter 19, we read there from verse 6 on, Then I heard what sounded like a great multitude, like the roar of rushing waters, and like loud peals of thunder, shoutings, as, uh, th thunder, sorry, shouting, Hallelujah! For the Lord our God Almighty reigns, let us rejoice and be glad and give him glory for the wedding of the Lamb has come. So dear friends, you know, when I look around me and I see what's going on, I'm very conscious of this fact that it is time for us to separate ourselves from this world. We are just pilgrims here. We don't belong here and we need to get our mindset right. We need to recognize that we are, although we are in this world, we are not of this world. Do you understand? Then I want you to notice that it says, And the, the bride has made herself ready. Do you understand? The bride has made herself ready. Fine linen, bright and clean, was given her to wear. What is this, um, this linen, this uh, stand for? It says the fine linen stands for the righteous acts of the saints. So dear friends, I want you to recognize here that we are the bride. And the first point or the first step in order to be part of this banquet feast is we have to separate ourselves from our old ways. We have to make a choice 
no longer to be married to or merged with sin, but to move away from it. And dear friends, don't think that if you are, um, you know, that you can handle it. You have to have a very special uh, relationship with Christ in order to be able to stand against it. You have to have a strong resolution in order to be able to stand like Daniel did and like his three friends did. You need, and dear friends, we are living in this time period which is unequal to ever before measured on planet Earth. There's never been a time period like we have now. The devil is like a roaring lion and his, his purpose is to, to take you captive. But you need to separate yourself from that. Now, dear friends, I would like to just in closing give you an ad advice as to how to do this. You know, we can't separate ourselves. But the word is very, very clear that Christ does that for us. And in order to make this clear, I'd like you to go with me to Ezekiel. Ezekiel chapter 36. Now, those of you who know your Bibles well, you'll know that Ezekiel 36 comes just before the book of Daniel. Okay, so Ezekiel is just before the book of Daniel. Ezekiel chapter 36. And what I want to draw your attention to there is from verse 36. Um, Ezekiel 36, verse 26 and verse 27. Okay. It says in verse 26. I'd like to maybe just jump back to verse 25, dear friends. It says there, I will sprinkle clean water on you and you will be clean. I will cleanse you from all your impurities and from all your idols. I will give you a new heart and I will put my spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh. And I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees. And be careful to keep my laws. Did you read that, dear friends? I want you to notice again who is doing the work. It reminds me of that verse in Genesis chapter 3, verse 15, where Christ says, I will put enmity between you and the woman. And he's referring to the serpent and to between your offspring and hers. We are her offspring. The person that is going to separate us from the devil is going to be Jesus Christ. Jesus says, I will place enmity in the hearts of his people. And I want you to notice right here in Ezekiel 36, verse 26, while well, we started from verse 25 on, I want you to notice that this work of separation is a work that Christ does in our lives. Paul makes it so clear that the flesh and the spirit cannot mingle. The fruits of the flesh and the, the fruits of the spirit are not the same. So dear friends, I want to just round this off by saying, you need to divorce your heart from sin. You need to unite with Christ. You need to allow him you need to choose. I want you to imagine for a moment that Christ has gone on his knees before you and he's asked that you will be his bride. And I hope that your response will be, yes, I will or I do. Dear friends, and when you do that, he will take you up in his arms. He will do what he said he will do. He will cleanse us. He will give us new hearts. He will put his spirit within us and cause us to keep his commandments and to do them. He will allow us to bear the fruits of righteousness. We will be wearing a white robe. We will be made ready to meet the bridegroom. So dear friends, my appeal to you in this time, while we have time, Please separate yourselves from sin. 
choose Christ. He places before us this invitation, our Heavenly Father, accept the invitation, dear friends, and allow Him to clothe you in the righteousness of Christ. Mm -hmm.